Hi, good day. This is chapter one, methods of circuit analysis. So here's the, the overview of what we are going to learn today. Um, first, we're going to learn about branch current analysis, and then we'll move on to mesh analysis, nodal analysis, mesh with current sources, nodal with voltage sources, bridge network, and finally mesh by inspection and nodal by inspection. So let's have a look at branch current analysis. Branch current analysis is the oldest, um, probably the most um, tedious technique used in circuit theory. So um, let's take for example this circuit shown here. The equations that you are going to obtain is based on the number of branches that you can find in the circuit. So for example, in this circuit there are three branches. So we are going to come out or develop three equations to represent this um, circuit. Now here are the steps to perform branch current analysis. First, we assign a distinct current of arbitrary direction to each branch of the circuit. Then we add the polarities for each voltage drop across the resistor or any element. Then we apply Kirchhoff voltage law for each mesh. Kirchhoff voltage law states that the sum of a voltage in a mesh or a loop is supposed to be equal to zero. And then we apply Kirchhoff current law to a node that includes all the branch currents. So Kirchhoff current law states that the sum of current going into a node and out of a node should be exactly equal to zero. So then we solve the, the equation for these branch currents. So let's go back to the examples that I showed you just now. Now here's the example where we can see that um, there are three branches in this circuit and we are trying to solve um, the circuit, the current in each of the branch. So as you can see there are three branches so we need to develop three equations. So first we assign distinct current of arbitrary direction to each branch. We assign the current flow in each branch. And then we add polarities for, for the resistor. So for example, we, we know that the current is current flow from positive polarity to negative polarity. So R1 here has a positive polarity at the bottom and negative polarity at the top. Same goes to R3, R2, N, and so on, E1 and E2. Then we apply Kirchhoff voltage law in each of the mesh. So for mesh 1, this is the equation that we obtained. And in mesh 2, this is the equation that we obtained. And we also know that at this particular node, you can find that the sum of current going into the node is I1 and I2, and the current go going out is I3. Those, so the sum of current should be I1 plus I2 equals to I3, according to Kirchhoff current law. So now, we have obtained three sets of equation. The first one is from mesh 1, the second one is, is from mesh 2, and the third one is from the node, based on KVL, Kirchhoff current law. Or the first and second is based on KVL, Kirchhoff voltage law. So now we have three unknowns and three sets of equations. So by solving the unknowns, based on these three sets of equations, we should be able to find the answer. So that's how branch current analysis works. Now it's a bit tedious using branch current analysis because um, you need to form three sets of equations. So which is why um, I would recommend you to use mesh analysis, which is a bit simpler than branch current analysis. So mesh analysis, I could, this is the steps used to solve mesh analysis. First, we assign current in clockwise direction to each closed loop of the network. And then we insert polarities for each resistor. And then we apply Kirchhoff voltage law to each closed loop. And then we solve the resulting equations. So now we, let's take a look at this example, which is quite similar to the previous example that we have, we have seen just now. So you can see that if we use mesh analysis, it's actually based on the number of meshes you can find in the circuit. So, so for example, in this example, you can see that there are two meshes. So you only need two equations to solve uh, this circuit, which is much simpler. So using KVL, first we assign current in clockwise direction for each mesh. 
and then, and then we insert polarities into each of the elements, into, in this case the resistor, and then we apply KVL, Kirchhoff voltage law, in each mesh or loop in clockwise direction. So by doing so, you come up with two sets of equations. This equation is used to describe the first mesh here, while this equation is used to de describe the second mesh here. Now you have two sets of equations and you have two unknowns. So by t solving these two sets of equations, you should be able to find the answer for I1 and I2, which is much simpler. So by doing so, this is the answer that you should be able to obtain at the end of the day. I1 is 1 ampere, I2 1 ampere, and I3, which is basically the sum of I1 um, minus I2, is 0 ampere. So we can also use Kramer's rule to solve for the unknowns, which would simplify the process. And the answer that you get would be exactly the same as using substitution method. So there are other methods which you can explore using either Gaussian elimination, matrix inversion, or numerical analysis. So here's some example that you can try it yourself. So in this example, you have three meshes, so you should be able to obtain three sets of equation to describe the three meshes. And at the end of the day, by solving the three equations, you should be able to get the answer. The current I would be equal to 1.188 ampere. So the third method that we are going to learn today is nodal analysis. Nodal analysis is based on the number of nodes that you can find in the circuits. So if you have two nodes, then you should be able to obtain two equations at the end of the day. So let's have a look at the procedure for nodal analysis. First, you need to determine the number of nodes or junction of two or more branches. Then you need to select a reference node or ground and label all other nodes. And then you have to apply Kirchhoff current law at each node except for the reference node, which is zero. And then you have to solve the resulting equations. So let's try and have a look at one example to understand further how we can solve the circuit using node analysis. So let's take a look at this example. You need to calculate the node voltages in this circuit. So we can see that you have one node here, which is labeled as V1, and then you have a second node here, which is labeled as V2. So in other words, you have two nodes at the end of the day, you should be able to get two equations to describe the two nodes. Now using Kirchhoff current law, which states that the current going in should be equal to the current going out, or the sum of current going into a node should be equal to zero, then you should be able to solve the resulting equations. So for node one, we can see that I1 is go, go flowing into the node, while I2 and I3 is flowing out of the node. So node one, the equations that we obtained is I1 equals I2 plus I3. Similarly, for node 2, the equations that we obtained is I2 plus I4 equals I1 plus I5. Now, using Ohm's law, we know that current I is equals to voltage divided by resistance, the potential difference divided by the resistance. So by, using, by substituting Ohm's law into all, all these variables, we should be able to obtain these two sets of equations, which describes the two nodes here. So by, by solving these two sets of equations, we should be able to find the, the answer, the parameters for variable V1 and variable V2. So using the method of substitution, this is what we get. V1 equals 13.333 volt and V2 equals 20 volt. Similarly, you can use Kramer's rule to solve the same equations in order to find the parameters for the variables. So this is what you get. V1 equals 13.33 volt and V2 equals 20 volt, which is identical with the method of substitution. So you can also use other methods like using source conversion or mesh analysis as well to solve the similar circuit problem. So let's have a look at um, this example here. Again, you are asked to find the voltage V1 and V2, which happens to fall on node, this node and this node. So you have two nodes, so you should be able to have two sets of equations to describe the two nodes. So using, again, using KCL, Kirchhoff current law, you should be able to obtain this set of equation 
for node 1 and this set of equations for node 2. And by solving them using either Kramer's rule or the method of substitution, you can find that V1 equals 0 watt and V2 equals 12 watt. Methods that I showed you, the mesh and another analysis that I showed you earlier on is basically the fundamentals of these two methods. Now, now um, things could be a little bit different when you have a current source exists in a, a circuit. Now, when you have a current source, then the way to solve mesh analysis might be a slightly different. So you, there are two cases that you can explore. First, if the current source exists only in one of the mesh, you can find the current directly. But if the current source exists between two or more meshes, then you have, we have to use a different method known as super mesh. In super mesh, we exclude the current source. We replace it with an open circuit and the elements that connected in series with it. Then we apply KVL in the super mesh and KCL in the nodes of the excluded elements. So let's have a look at this example. This is a typical mesh. Um, this is a method which can be solved using a typical mesh analysis method. So you have one mesh, you have two mesh. So in the end, at the end of the day, you should be able, be able to obtain two sets of equation. And by solving that two sets of equation, you would be able to find I1 equals negative 2 ampere and I2 equals negative 5 ampere. But for this circuit, it's slightly different. The current source happen to fall in the middle of two meshes. So because of this condition, we have to use super mesh. In super mesh, we have to extract out this current source, this branch which consists of the current source. Now after extracting this branch, you can see that the circuit would look like this. And this circuit which consists of two meshes, I1 and I2, is known as a super mesh. So a super mesh is formed when two meshes have a current source in common. So now we have to solve this circuit dif uh, separately. So first, we apply KVL on this super mesh and we obtain this set of equation. And then we apply KCL on the branch which consists of the current source and you can see that we obtain this set of equation. We can see that I2 is flowing into the branch while 6 ampere and I1 is flowing out of the branch. So I2 equals to I1 plus 6. Now by solving these two equations, you have two variables and you have two sets of equations. So by solving these two equations, we will be able to find that I1 equals negative 3.2 ampere and I2 equals 2.8 ampere. So here's another example where you might be interested to explore. So again, a current source falls exactly in the middle of two meshes, so you have to use super mesh to solve this kind of circuit problem. So by solving it, we find that I1 equals 3.33 ampere. I1 here equals 3.33 ampere. Now, like mesh analysis, Nodal analysis could be quite different when a voltage source is present. So there are two cases, again, there are two cases that we can look, look into. The first case states that if the voltage source is connected to a reference node, then we can use back the typical nodal analysis method to solve it, set the voltage equal to the voltage source. For case two, if the voltage source is connected between two non-reference nodes, then we have to form a super node in order to solve this kind of circuit problem. So we have to exclude the voltage source and replace it with a short circuit, apply Kerhoff current law in the super node and KVR Kerhoff voltage law to determine the node's voltages. So let's have a look at this example. We can see that the voltage source falls in the middle of two nodes. So you have to use a super node. We have to form a super node to, in order to solve this kind of problem. Super node st states that we have to remove the source and replace it with a short circuit. And then we have to apply KCL to this new network. So using super node, by, by solving KCL using, 
yeah, on this super node, this is one node here, which consists of the original V1 node and V2 node. So by solving k this node using KCL, we find we would be able to get this set of equation. And, and the original voltage here is basically the potential difference V1 minus V2. So now you have two sets of equation, and by solving these two sets of equation, we should be able to find the answer for the nodes V1 and V2. So V1 equals 10.667 volt. So this is a summary of mesh analysis and nodal analysis. To find mesh currents, mesh analysis states that to f it is used to find mesh currents and it is suitable to be used with circuits with many series and connected elements, voltage sources and super mesh. Super mesh replace current sources with an, op with an open circuit. In nodal analysis, the typical nodal analysis find node voltages suitable to be used with such circuits with many parallel connected elements, current sources and super node. And super node replace voltage sources with a short circuit. Now, when we find a resistor in between two branches, we refer to this kind of circuit as a bridge network. So this kind of circuit, bridge network, can usually be solved using either mesh analysis or nodal analysis. So for example, you have a circuit here. You can solve it using mesh analysis. We can find that there are three meshes here. One mesh, two meshes, and three meshes. So by solving these three meshes, we have three sets of equation, and we have three variables to be solved. So by method of substitution, we find that I1 equals 4 ampere, I2 equals 2.667 ampere, I3 equals 2.667 ampere. So a bridge network is said to be balanced if the current or voltage through the bridge arm is 0 ampere or 0 volt. Now let's have a look at mesh by inspection. Let's say, for example, you have a circuit which looks like this. You have two meshes, and then you, f you form two sets of equations to describe these two meshes. And you should be able to obtain these two sets of equations here. Now, by putting them into matrix form, we can see that this is the matrix form of the, the equations. So we can see that the diagonal terms, which is 15 and 20, is the sum of the resistance in the related mesh. We can see that in mesh 1, 5 plus 10 gives you 15. Mesh 2, 10 plus 6 plus 4 gives you 20. And the off-diagonal terms is the negative of the resistance common to mesh 1 and mesh 2. So 10 is common to mesh 1 and mesh 2. So by appending a negative there, it represents the off-diagonal terms. And at the right-hand side term is the algebraic sum taken anticlockwise of all independent voltage source in the related mesh. So by using anticlockwise, we can find that 15 minus 10 gives you 5 in mesh 1. And in mesh 2, you have 10. So now using the same concept to solve this circuit, we should be able to find the, this answer. You can try yourself. Now let's have a look at nodal by inspection. Again, let's say, for example, we have these circuits here, which consist of two nodes. So by using KCL, applying them on these two nodes, we should be able to set, get two sets of equation. These equations here, which describe V1, and this equation here, which describe the node in V2. Now if we put them, arrange them in matrix form, this is what we get. Now if we observe carefully, you can see that the diagonal terms is the sum of the conductance direct to the node. So for example, V1, we have 1 over 4 plus 1 over 2, which gives you 3 over 4. Similarly at V2, 1 over 4 plus 1 over 6 should give you 5 over 12. And the off-diagonal terms represent the conductance between the two nodes, node V1 and V2. So between these two nodes, we have 4. So by putting them in, by inverting it, into putting it into reciprocal form, you have 1 over 4. And by appending a negative sign to it, you have negative 1 over 4 at the off-diagonal term. So for the right-hand side term here, it represents the algebraic sum of the current entering the node. So we have 5 ampere entering V1. That's why we have 5 here. 
and then for node 2, you have 10 ampere entering the node and 5 ampere coming up from the node. So 10 minus 5 gives you 5 here. So if you apply this concept on this example, this is what you get. Thank you, that's all for today. Most of the images and the contents in these slides, in these lecture notes, are taken from Alexander Sadiku, Fundamentals of Electric Circuits, McGraw-Hill. Thank you.